Greetings everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a basic stack-based buffer overflow exploit culminating in control of a local stack variable resulting in the modification of program behavior. I'm going to be using the Kali VM that I set up in my previous video. In order to get started with this, we first have to make one configuration change. So let's open up our terminal. We're going to need to disable address space layout randomization, or ASLR, in order for these exploits to work consistently. Now, more advanced exploits will take care of this by themselves, but as we're going through the basics here, we're going to have to help these exploits along by disabling it ourselves. So to do that, we need to create this file in etsy sysctl.d called 01disableaslr.conf. The contents of that file are kernel.randomizeva space equals zero. After you set this file, you're going to have to reboot. When you reboot, ASLR will be disabled. Very important. The second thing I'm going to do is purely optional. It's a matter of personal preference. GDB, by default, will use AT&T syntax when it displays assembly code. I prefer Intel syntax. So in order to get that to happen, I need to modify my GDB init file located here with this line set disassembly dash flavor Intel. So this will make it default to Intel syntax. Okay, with those two things out of the way, let's take a look at the source code that I'm going to be using. Now, this source code is available in a link in the video description if you want to follow along. This code here is pretty basic. Include statements, main function, let's get into it. So I've got this 16 character array stored on the stack. And then I've got this integer variable called has authenticated set to zero also on the stack. Now, this program requires a bit of imagination. So pretend, for sake of argument, that this variable here represents a prior state that is passed into this function from something higher up the authentication chain, indicating the user is already authenticated before and doesn't need to do it again. Here is where my actual buffer flow happens. I'm doing an unbounded copy from argv1 into my 16 character array without any kind of bounds checking. And then here is the actual logic of the function. If has authenticated has a non-zero value, which right now it does not, or the comparison of my buffer to my cleverly chosen valid password, valid password equals zero, meaning it matches, then the user is welcomed, otherwise they are told to screw off. Okay, so let's play around with the code and see what happens back in our terminal. First thing you're going to have to do is compile it, which I've already done here. You don't need to use any special flags. You can just use GCC to compile it. So let's run it. If I run it with an invalid password like blarg, I get access denied, as I expect. If I run it with a valid password, I get welcomed, as I expect. So now let's play around with it. I'm going to use Python to generate more arbitrary inputs. And the way I'm going to do this is by using command substitution in Linux which is denoted by this dollar parentheses syntax. So I'm going to do python dash c to execute inline. I'm going to call the print function, and then I need to pass in some characters. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. So that's 16 characters. This will fill my 16 character buffer. And then I'm going to do a hex 01. And print, and python, and paren. And when I do this, I get welcome authenticated user despite the fact I did not enter in a valid password. Why did this happen? Let's find out. Okay, so now we're going to dive into GDB to examine the stack and figure out exactly why the previous command that I ran actually worked. So GDB, example 2.1, and here we are. So the first thing I have to do is look at the main function. So the way to do that is to do disass main. And there we go. There is my main function. You see, the operative thing here is the call to string copy. That's where the buffer overflow happens. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint directly after the string copy so that I can examine the stack after it's thrashed, which is in main plus 59. So I do break star main plus 59. If I want to get information on my breakpoints, I can do I space B, short for information breakpoints. And you can see there my breakpoint is at main plus 59 as I want. So now I'm going to run it. Where you can just run with R. So now I need to provide my characters. So I'm going to do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E. This is 15 characters. Why 15 characters? Because string copy will automatically append a null terminator, and I don't want to overflow the stack yet. So this will be a very clean string copy. So, okay. I run it. I'm at my breakpoint. Now I need to know where on the stack I need to look 
for my input. And the way I used to do this is I look at the current stack frame. The way you do this is with iframe, short for information frame. The thing I'm looking for here is locals. Locals indicates the starting address of local variables on the stack. So now I want to examine the stack. And the way you do this in GDB is using the x command. Let's say I'm going to do x, 16x, which is going to look at 16 4 byte chunks of memory. I'm going to give it this locals address here, bf, ff, f3, 58, and then I'm going to subtract 40. Why 40? Well, the local variables are actually going to be at a negative offset from this locals address, and I'm choosing 40 as a rough heuristic because I think it, it should get me into the approximate area that I want. Play around with this offset until you get the area you're looking for. So I run this, and here I have the contents of the stack. Now, this looks very familiar to me because I'm familiar with the ASCII codes for certain characters. This 30, 31, 32, 33, whatever, through... Um, 39 is my 0 through 9, and then 61 is lowercase a, going through my 65, which is lowercase e, followed by my null terminator. The next D word, or 4 byte chunk, you'll notice is all zeros. Now, I can, I can hypothesize that this is my has authenticated variable, but hypotheses have no place, so let's actually verify this. I'm going to go back to main here, and I know that has authenticator has a value of zero, which means the value of zero must have been stored in this variable at some point during main. So if I look at main, we'll see at offset 31 copying of zero into EVP minus zero XC. I can get the address of this by simply doing X dollar EVP minus zero XC, and I get the value BF FF F34C. If I go back to my stack, this is where I think has authenticated is. It has the address bffff340, that's this. This is 44, this is 48, this is 4C. So now I've verified that this actually does in fact contain has authenticated. Okay, I'm going to continue and I get access denied as I expect. So now let's run this again. Okay. So now I want to fill my buffer, so I need to add one more character, that's 16, and then I'm just going to append some random character, doesn't matter, I'm going to do capital A, because now it's hex value, it's hex 41. So I'm going to run this, I hit my breakpoint as I expect, so now let us take a look at the stack again. So this should look familiar, I have my 30, 31, 32, 33, whatever here, and then now instead of my null terminator that I have here, I have 66, which is my F, and then instead of zeros here, I have hex 41, which is my uppercase A. So I have successfully overwritten the has authenticated variable with a non-zero value. So according to the program's logic here, it should consider me as having previously authenticated, and thus this should work. And if I continue, sure enough, it did. And that's that. Thanks for watching.